absolutely respect it. I'm a veteran, therefore, he's my commander in chief. Uh, and he's my president. And I'm going to wait and see. But what I'm curious about is what he does with cybersecurity. That is my world. And I want that world to have the absolute best administrative tasks that it can. So it leads me to the question how do you feel about his administrative picks? Uh, I was concerned about logistics. Uh, let's say mats and ships for Hawaii. The, the person that he chose for transportation secretary was a great pick. She stood in front of the Senate and said, I am not going to mess with the Jones Act. And to the American uh, entrepreneur, that's core. Uh, that keeps us competitive, and it keeps us in a defense mode. Well, you're a, that's one pick I like. You're a veteran. I'd like to ask you, what do you think about his pick for the Veterans Administration? I think it was a brilliant move on his part to get somebody that's not a veteran, but is an MD. How do you think that would be perceived by veterans that uh, go to the hospital all the time and, and are relying on benefits and, and how things have been somewhat compromised in the past as far as um, benefits and things of that nature? I think he's going to prove that uh, he was the right guy for the job. The question is, is his executive committee going to be with him? Uh, like we saw at State Department. Uh, you've got to get the politics out of it and you've got to get the priority. The veteran, the widow and the orphan are the priority. How do you streamline it? Technology. And they're working on it. It was started by our own General Shinseki. When he was in there, he created funding for it. Uh, Senator Akaka, when he was chair, created the funding mechanism. We're starting to see the residual of that now. So I think plans that came prior, if, if the executive committees will support that secretary, I think we're going to do okay. You're going to give the president 100 days. That's the grandfather in you. What happens when the news headlines of the day supersede your patience of 100 days, particularly the uh, resignation of General Flynn? Yeah, that was a big one, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, I don't know why Flynn resigned other than personalities. Uh, I'm hoping the other secretaries. I'm grateful. I'll tell you what. I'm grateful that Jim Mathis is there. I'm great that the SecDef is there because he's not only a secretary in the Pentagon, I think he's a conduit to state and foreign affairs. Uh, and I think that's where the president is spending a little more time right now, trying to balance the perimeter. Uh, I'm going to take a wait and see on that. Okay. Well, that's fair enough. I want to thank you for your time today. That's Thanks for sharing. Show. Veterans in Technology is now five years old. We started as a little group in San Francisco outside of Silicon Valley. It was started by our dear friend Craig Newmark, founders of Craigslist, who is not a veteran but is the son of a veteran, and Catherine Webster, our, our chair. Uh, we started, the goal was to create a pathway, kind of like the VFW and the American Legion do, only technology centric. In other words, so many young vets today come out with great ideas. They want to create an app. They want to get. They don't know how to raise the money. Uh, they don't know how to do a small business uh, administration process. So we have all of those resources in the bundle. If you go to vetsintech.co, you will find an amazing core value that is just bringing the veteran into the uh, entrepreneur world, the innovative world, and the academic world. So we find money to send you to school if you have an idea. If you have patent problems, we can help you with that. We've built a great family for today's veteran and family member. Quite proud of it. We're now in five cities, major core cities, and I'm hoping to get the Aloha chapter moving forward. What cities are they in? We started in San Francisco. We're now in Los Angeles, Washington, D.C., Dallas, Texas, and Fort Worth or for, in five years. So we had the kickoff last year in San Francisco uh, where we, you know, big tech event and everybody was there. What's really great is if you don't, if you're looking for a job, let's say at Twitter or at Facebook or something, we have that network. And what's fascinating is that a lot of the HR directors or techies themselves in, in, in the, are actual veterans. Grandpas and uncles and aunts, and it's just, it's really cool. So uh, in this world, if you attended the uh, the building summit in, um, in October at our convention center, you would have heard from some of the great uh, tech people talking about the future of the Pacific, $57 billion in investments. And yet we don't have enough penetration testers. How do we get it into the high schools? How do we get kids excited about 
cybersecurity and, and, and defense mechanisms in it, and the careers or inventions that go with it. How do we do that? Well,